Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Today we have um, Scott Bricker here for us to talk about Power Automate. Scott is the Director of Educational Technology at Santa Margarita Catholic High School in California and is also an NCC Professional Learning Specialist. Um, he is here to share us with us um, about Power Automate and we all thank you for being here. And if you have questions, feel free to add them in the chat. And Scott, we are all set. Awesome. Thanks, Megan. Can you hear me okay? Yes, can hear you great. And then also want to let everyone know that we are recording. Perfect. Thanks, Megan. And thanks for moderating the chat. And uh, thanks to all of you for being here. So super excited about this session. And right off the bat, um, I'm, I'm sure others have said this on these live events, but just kind of a, a, a precursor here, a disclaimer. You can't cover everything in a half hour with Microsoft Power Automate. So I'm going to do things a little bit differently today and just jump right into the tool itself and show you how to create a quick flow. And then I'll circle back at the end and talk about some of the vocabulary and the inner workings of Power Automate. I find sometimes that if you dig into that too soon, that can kind of take you a while. And I really want you guys to see uh, how simple of a tool this can be. So. Whether you've dipped your toe in the water of Power Automate or you're really spending a lot of time with it or you've never even heard of it and you're coming across it for the first time, I hope you get a sense after the next 30 minutes just how impactful Power Automate can be. And while it may look a bit confusing and overwhelming at the beginning, once you dive into it and start playing around with it, it actually does get a little bit easier. It's kind of like riding a bike. It's a little bit frustrating at first. You're going to fall down. You're going to make some mistakes. Um, but after a while, you're going to get the hang of it and start really figuring out uh, how to use it and how it can positively affect your workflow. So let me just give you a brief scenario of kind of where we started with this. I, I've been hearing about this for a couple of years now, working with Andrew Fitzgerald, who I'm sure many of you know, an amazing educator out here in California, um, who's like revolutionized his practices with Automate and Power BI and Power Apps. And then um, our good buddy from NCC, Jason Mockerman, and I have been working on a bunch of stuff, just tossing ideas back and forth. And I really got inspired uh, to use that, the, use those ideas in this tool around a particular scenario. So for us, um, as Megan mentioned, I work at a Catholic high school, 912 high school in California. And transfer students are a big deal at the high school level for academic reasons, for athletic reasons. Um, we have an international school population about 85 to 100 international students. So we have kids coming out, uh, coming in and out at, at all different times of the school year. Uh, you would think it'd be all at the beginning and try and keep it organized, but it just doesn't work that way. So what happens for us is when a transfer student comes in, this list of this litany of, of tasks that happens here on the right uh, has to get put into place. And so what usually happens is our uh, admissions director will start an email and he'll email the 15 or 16 people that have to be on this. And you all know what happens from there, like replies and reply alls. And did I attach the file? Here's a new file, all this back and forth. And it's not just one student at a time. It's sometimes three and four and five students at a time that are in this transfer student protocol. So you've got tens, sometimes hundreds of emails being bounced around on a monthly basis and it, it's really frustrated me over the last couple of years and again in, in, in kind of in conjunction with what i've learned from my colleagues on power automate uh, really inspired me to simplify this process so i'll circle back to this at the end just to show you a big picture of what um, a big flow could look like but i wanted to start with something a little bit simpler so something that we all use uh, forms right and data collection and whether it's a back to school night, open house, um, incoming students, just serving the students in your class, uh, collecting forms and the data we get from forms is a great way to draw some information from a certain population. So I just kind of created this simple form. I've, I've got it. I'm doing it uh, for a back to school night. So I've got parents first and last name. Uh, maybe I teach three different classes, so I want to have them let me know uh, in which class their student is just so I know as a quick reference. And I've got a spot for uh, two parent email addresses here and then just a text box if they want to share any particular information about their students. So the goal of this is I want to send an automatic uh, kind of welcome and thank you email 
to the family. So they come into back to school night, they fill this form out, and then by the time they get home, or even in a matter of minutes, they've got kind of a, a welcome or thank you email for me. All right. So um, so keep that in mind. Again, first name, last name. I've got the courses, a couple email addresses, and room for comments. So I'm just going to flip over to Power Automate here. All right. And again, this is uh, directly on the home page. If you don't see the Power Automate tile, it's possible that you just haven't used it before. Of course, it always depends on um, how your individual 365 tenant is built, but you can always find it under the all apps. Um, but you do have to make sure that your IT admins have turned it on. There are some cases where uh, districts and schools and organizations have turned it off. So do make sure it's on and you'll be able to see that tile. So again, just diving right in, don't don't be um, afraid of or intimidated by all the different clicks you have. We'll come back to this in a minute, but I'm just going to go right to create. And when it loads, so I've got a bunch of different options here and I'm going to click on an automated flow. So I want to automate this process and I want it to be triggered by a designated event. That term trigger is going to be very important and I'll come back to that in a minute. So I'll give it a name. And then I'm going to search all the triggers and you can see actually right away I've already got the trigger that I want. So a trigger, of course, being something that starts a series of events, right? So what's going to start the series of events is when a new response is submitted. If the trigger you're looking for doesn't appear, I can just search for forms. And then all the different triggers that come up with that tool will show up in that list. Of course, this is this is the main one and the most popular one that pops up is when a new response is submitted. So I'm going to click create. And now I'm into my flow. So here's the beginning. When a new response is submitted, it's going to ask me to pick the form. When I click on the drop down menu, it's going to search all of the forms that I have on my 365 accounts. So I'm signed in with my 365 credentials. So now it's linked to every team, every form, all my groups, all that kind of stuff. So it kind of self populates and you don't it takes some of the, the workload and the stress out of it. So I'm going to select this uh, back to school night parent info. And so the trigger, this flow is going to begin when a response happens in this form. All right. And the next step that we always add, and again, I'll search forms, is get response details. So I'm going to add that as a next step. So whenever you use new response submitted as a trigger, you've got to have get response details as your next step. So what this does, this first step, recognizes that the form has been submitted. The second step is going to pull all of the information from that form. So it's line by line going to pull that and kind of create a database uh, of fields that you can fill in later. And we'll get to that in just a minute. OK, so under unique identifier again, I'm going to connect it to that same form. And under the unique identifier, here's what I love about Power Automate is there's a lot of artificial intelligence built into it and it can kind of predict where you want to go. So you notice all I did was click in the box here under the response ID and I got this little box over the side of suggestions of dynamic content. So dynamic content, of course, being content that updates in real time, right? As as information comes in. So I've got this list of response notifications. This is the response ID. Notice that ties back to what it's asking me for. So I'm going to click on this and now I've got everything ready to go. So when a new response is submitted, uh, Power Automate is going to look at that form and it's going to pull all the list of responses from that form. All right. And then my next step here is to go and send an email so I can do this a couple different ways. I can look it up under Outlook. And I've got all the different Outlook options that pop up or I can just type in send an email. And I've got all these different options. I'm going to use the, the Outlook version gives me a little bit more uh, flexibility and some more capabilities. And I'm going to have this send an email as my next option. OK, so notice we've got some asterisks here. We've got some required um, information that we need to put in here. And let's just show you how easy it is to fill it in. So in terms of email addresses, I'm going to click on this. And on the right hand side here, I've got add dynamic content. 
So remember before we pulled the response details and now what you notice is on the right hand side I've got this content from the form that I can pull in. So I'm going to send it to parent email one and parent email two. So it's automatically going to pull that information from the form. By the way, if only one email is entered, it's just going to skip that second one. It's not going to error out or send you a, um, an error message or anything like that. It's just going to skip it. So in the subject, uh, welcome to NCCE High School. If only that were a place and we were all teachers, it'd be an amazing school. And then just a quick email. Um, so I will say, uh, let's go, dear last name, family. So again, I'm just typing in the email. You might have a template before, uh, you know, pre-created. You can do this on the fly. And then wherever I want to fill in information in the form, I'm just clicking on that space. So I've got dear and then whatever their last name, family. And I will say, uh, welcome to our science class. And in that case, I'm going to go to the course right here. So it's going to pull the actual course name. 2021 school year. I'm looking forward to getting to know your student. And then here are the comments. You left me. Please verify these are correct. And then here I will enter the information about what they want to share about their student. And so you can personalize this as, as much as you want. You can um, you can add as much of the information as you want in here, um, customize it, make it as long as you want, as short as you want. Um, I'll click save. And so just to review, let me expand all this. And I'll zoom out here just so you can see it all. So here's what's going to happen. I've got this form. It's going to pull the list of responses and then every time a response comes in, it's going to send the email to the uh, parent information that's there and going to personalize it with their last name, the course that they're in and any comments that they left me uh, in their in their form. OK, so before we actually execute this, let me just pause briefly. Um, and Megan, if there are any questions or comments you're seeing in the chat or if anybody wants to come off mute, we can take a couple minutes and I can just answer some quick questions about this particular flow so far. This is awesome, Scott. I don't see any specific questions as of yet, but if anyone wants to come off mute and ask, feel free. Hey, Scott, this is Charity. I do have one question hey. for you. Yeah. If my student was in multiple courses and I had that selected on my form as such, would both of those courses show up in that email as well? They would. It, sh it should pull all the information in there if you have a multiple responses um, question. OK, that was my only question. Thank you. I'm glad you could verify that for me. You, you bet. In fact, Charity, that's a similar example to what we did with um, the Medical University of South yeah. Carolina last week. Yeah, we were looking at their um, their protocol for sure. Awesome. Thanks, Scott. Yeah, you bet. Hey, Scott, this is Julie Combs. I'm hey. curious if the uh, if the form changes. So if if I realize, oh, I forgot to add something and I've already created the automate will uh, will the automate continue to work? and just give me the additional options for the fields that I added in the form? It, yeah, Julie, it should. Um, you will definitely want to go back to the flow and and make sure you update everything and test it out. Um, and there's some you know, testing and, and sampling that you can do with that, but it should pick up all of those changes. Um, I, I have seen a couple incidents of that where it will error out, but if I just like delete a, like delete a, um, a block and then put it back in sometimes that fixes it so 99 percent of the time it works fine but occasionally you do have to do some troubleshooting okay thanks yeah you bet great question anything else okay perfect so let's let's see what this looks like um so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to fill the form out here in a second but what i want to show you is um i've got a separate email account this email inbox is empty right now because I want to kind of demonstrate just how quickly and efficiently this can happen. So uh, we'll come in here. Uh, let's make this uh, a little basketball oriented since the NBA is coming back in. Um, he's going to be an AP chem, of course, Bronny James. I'm going to have this go to my test account that I have here. 
I'm going to leave the second email block blank. Let me just make sure I have that correct. Perfect. And we are going to say. Everybody needs help with time management, which we all need these days. So just a quick comment. OK, so very simple. And again, don't forget, I know you all know this because we're all we're, we love forms, but things like uh, the QR code. You can make this a touchless survey. Parents can come in and scan the QR code on back to school night. Um, I'm also working with our athletic trainers here at school, and they're doing a similar process to every time a student comes into the training room. Now the student scans a form and kind of an intake form and enters information. And then we have a SharePoint document where the trainers can then go update on the back end. You know what services they provided, what treatment um, prognoses, all of those kind of things. So um, just keep those options in mind that all of that works and then automate just kind of works in the background. So I will hit submit here. And hopefully that went through that might not have gone through. Let's see if it executed. One sec. Let that save. It did not go through. Let's try it again. AP Chem. My email address. And submit. There we go. Response was submitted. Submit another response. It goes right back to it. And then if I click over to my email, boom, right there. There's my welcome email. You can see what it looks like. It fills in the James family, tells me the course right there. And then here are the comments at the bottom that that left. And that was what, five seconds? I mean, that wasn't even five seconds that that email went through. So the speed in terms of with um, the, ter the speed in which it gets that information out is unbelievable. Now, of course, the bigger the flow, the more you put into it, the more data it pulls, the longer that it takes. But I can tell you with the simple uh, forms and emails that I've done so far, it's typically less than five to 10 seconds. It goes very, very quickly. Um, and I will say too, sometimes you do have to play around with the formatting. Um, as I say, I definitely recommend when I was answering Julie's question, definitely recommend testing these things out uh, and kind of tweaking little things so you get the formatting right. Um, and so that it looks professional and, and, and whatnot when it gets to your family. So that's just like a simple way to get into Power Automate and building flows. Let me just take a few minutes to walk you through some of the basics now so you kind of get a bigger picture of what it can do and how to navigate once you're in Power Automate. And then right at the end, I want to circle back and show you the flow that uh, we're building to uh, meet the needs of that transfer student process. Again, just at the end to kind of dangle a carrot out there, if you will, and show you a big picture of what it can look like. So um, from the home screen in Power Automate, You'll see a couple different things. You've got all kinds of different uh, tiles to click on and things like that. Um, you've got templates here. You've got some of the most popular tools that you can put into flow. Um, and you've got also some, um, this is almost like little tutorials or um, step throughs of how you can do approval requests and conditions and all that kind of thing. So um, in addition to templates down below, let me walk you through some of my favorite areas. The first would be on the My Flows page. Um, as you build this out, and in fact, let me switch over to my school account. And under My Flows, you'll see all the different areas here. So um, when you get to My Flows, you've got a couple different areas here. So on the first page, these are flows that only I'm working on. And just as a reminder in terms of terminology and vocabulary, Power Automate is the tool and flows are what you create. Flows are the things that you create. So as you, some of you may remember, this tool used to be called Microsoft Flow, um, and they've lumped it since lumped it in with all of their Power Platform. So Power Platform is the bigger picture. And inside of that, you have Power Automate, Power BI, and Power Apps. So Power Automate is the tool, and flows are the things that you create that get executed. So I've got my flows. These are flows that only I'm working on. Um, I love this team flows. 
So here's that transfer process. Again, I'll come back to it in a minute. So I'm currently co-editing this with our activities director and our admissions director. So these become team flows now because I have multiple people working on them so we can all kind of edit at the same time. Um, now, just a, a quick mention there. It's not as seamless as co-editing a Word or document or Excel um, because you have to be careful when you save and when you make changes, kind of like computer coding. So there's definitely a little bit of a, um, uh, a work in progress, kind of an adjustment period to figuring out how to do that. But you can share flows so that you can co-edit uh, as you move the process forward. And then business process and, and, and user interface flows. These are kind of some higher level uh, type flows that you can build. Um, but just a quick look at what the My Flows homepage looks like. We talked about create, where you can create a flow. I love these last two things I'm going to show you um, before I switch over to showing you that big picture transfer flow. Under templates, if, if there's a process you're looking for, chances are, especially if it's kind of an introductory process like this send an email one, quite possibly there's a template already built for it. So if you go to the templates page, Here's like thousands and thousands of templates that are already built with different uh, connectors and tools already built. And then all you have to do is go in and fill in the individual information. So you can see it's got some of the most popular here on the home page. Uh, these are, I'm sorry, these are all the flows. Then here's the most popular under featured. And you can see seem like uh, send a customized email, post a message to a team, get updates from a blog, so on and so forth. You've got, uh, templates that have been shared with you, approvals, data collection, I mean, it goes on and on. We could go through for hours and hours looking at all of these. Um, you can see the data collection, a lot of Excel and SharePoint and forms heavy, uh, understandably so, collecting all that data. So just so you see, uh, send a form response for approval. When you click on this template, it gives you a little bit of a synopsis of, of the tools that are gonna be involved and then when I click continue, it actually dumps me right into the flow with all of these things already created. Now, again, don't get overwhelmed by all the different things you have to fill in. As you build your knowledge and your comfort level with Automate, this will begin to make a lot more sense. But just wanted to show you, you don't have to necessarily build everything from scratch here. OK, we'll click OK and go back here. So anyway, that's templates. So definitely explore that if you want to kind of you know dip your toe in the shallow end, so to speak, um, and get used to some of the things that where the, the the framing and the shell is already built. Templates might be a great thing for you. The other piece I'll mention is this connectors tab. Connectors are basically the apps or tools that link everything together in a flow. So with the one I showed you earlier. We used two connectors. We used Forms and we used Outlook, right? And we connected the flow together using those tools. So um, it doesn't have to be just Office 365 tools. This is kind of like when you hit the, the plus sign to add a tab in Microsoft Teams and all these different apps and tools pop up. I don't know what 80% of these are, but there might be three or four or five things on this list that you like um, that you want to start using and you can kind of explore how you would use these tools or one of these tools, like how you would uh, share a YouTube link or post to a YouTube channel, things like that. You've got Instagram in here, Facebook, all of those kind of things. So um, as you get more confident, again, and explore this a little bit more, um, you may be able to find some apps on this list that would be helpful, okay? So that's just a, a really quick intro again, like flow could be a full day, Power Automate could be a full day type session, but we just kind of wanted to show you some of the, the easy ways in and I'll, I'll leave you with that complex process. So um, under my team flows here, oops, did it sign me out? Oh, here we go, back to my flows. So remember that transfer student process, uh, student comes in, and has to go through like 15 different channels. So here's what it looks like. And I may have to zoom out so you see the whole thing. Um, so here's basically what happens. The form comes in. We pull the details. Uh, right away, we've got a transfer student team. It automatically creates a channel in that team with that student's name on it. So all communication is now in that student's channel, not via email change back and forth. So we create a channel. 
we send a thank you email to the family. Notice I've personalized um, this title here. You can actually click on the three dots and rename these things to personalize it and make it a little bit um, easier to reference the information. I kind of like that. And then we also have um, an athletic form. So there's the question in this form if they're interested in becoming an athlete at Santa Margarita. If so, we send them an email and we attach a worksheet that they have to fill out. That's all part of the process. And then it sits, this is Ron Blanc is our director of admissions. It sits in his box, there's an a, approval button. And then Ron comes back in a day or a week and he either accepts or denies the student. If he denies the student, we send him a thank you email. If he accepts the student, then this whole chain of events happens. We use planner, so we create a bucket. We create 15 tasks. The tasks get assigned to the counselors, the activity director, so on and so forth. So you can kind of see where this is going, right? In addition to we post a message letting the group know that that student has been accepted. So this is basically two clicks, one here to submit the form and one here to send to either approve or deny that student and then everything else kind of goes into action. Everybody just kind of goes and does their job. So um, super, super love that. It's a, still a work in progress for us, but it's really solving and, and fitting a need in terms of um, what we're trying to accomplish here. And just a few other things that you can use it for that, that we've thought of um, there in that list, you know, adding channels, alerts and notifications. We talked about the approval process. And really, I do think the list goes on and on and kind of the sky's the limit on one of these things. So um, anyway, have at it. It's amazing.